Hey guys, welcome to the Art Corner. It's almost the season for Halloween and I wanna kinda of get rolling on that. We want it to cool down and enjoy the fall colors. And what's better than an old black crow to get the season started? Um, today we're gonna to do an old black crow and he's kinda of contemporary. He's not a mammal crow, but I've noticed that this time of year you'll start seeing him out in your front yard and in the trees. So let's watch for this guy. And you're gonna get me from start to finish today. I hadn't done a thing, but draw a line where he's gonna sit, that's it. So I'm gonna get started drawing him. Um, I've got my podunk paper plates that I'm gonna use for my oil paint. And that's what we're gonna do him in is oil. I'm gonna use a palette knife too on this. And I brought two or three different kinds. I'm gonna do a contemporary background on him. So stay tuned, let me get him sketched for you. And I do, I was telling Brandon, I hate to hear myself talk all the time. So maybe it'll be more relaxing if you can just kind of watch me. And you know what's cool about TV? You know, you can't do this in, well, you can do this in real life. You're not getting a tattoo. This is just paint. You can fix it. It's not permanent, but he can edit it if I mess up. Here we go. I think I've got his scale right. When you paint for a while, you'll kind of start eyeballing scale. You don't have to really measure as much. And that's kind of what I'm doing. It's just giving him a little eyeball sketch here. Don't want him to look like a Robin. Here we go. And you know, you think, oh, I'm painting a black bird or I'm painting a black dog. Most of the time there's more blue and purple in your black animals and birds than there are black. I'm gonna enlarge him just a little bit on my phone. There we go. And I'm also looking at a little teeny art reference about this big. But that is the cool thing about an iPhone. You can pull up anything for art reference. And as long as it's free clip art and you don't sell it, you're good. I've got a lot of art reference on my Pinterest app. Used to use magazines, still do some, but most of the time I just pull up Pinterest research before I do a show or before I teach a class and, and get inspired. If it follows me home, I'll do it. One of our viewers, Tara Kistner, wanted me to do a swan. And sometime I might, if I'll go, if I remember to stop by and get a black canvas, I will do a swan. They look really good on black canvases. All right, I want him kind of ratchet. Let me make his head a little lower, a little flatter. There we go. Now I would spray him. That's what you're supposed to do next is spray this lead. But the hairspray that I've got here is kind of, uh, thick and I'm afraid that it'll mess it up. So I'm not going to, we're just gonna wing it. I hope he turns out good. I've done him before downtown, uh, in between jobs, just for something to do. And uh, when, you're, when you're sort of laid back about your drawing, and you don't have any pressure to sell it, you do a better job. Let me pull this forward just a little bit. There we go. Just kind of getting rid of my extra lines with the, this little kneaded eraser. There we go. Now this little sketch really is just for me. So I can kind of see where he's going to be. Now we're going to go wild on the background. And this background's got everything in. It's got blue and it's got some yellow okra. So on my paper plate, I've already poured out some linseed oil and that's your blending medium. Let me get a couple of different blues. I'm gonna use, what is that one? I don't know, it's kind of an ultramarine. This one hasn't been open yet. This is Camden blue. I'm also gonna do a little bit of Payne's gray, my new favorite color. 
it looks black, but it's not. It's, it's a real deep, rich blue and white. All artists really need a great big tube of titanium white. This one's kind of old, so I'm going to squeeze it, but it's a good Grombacher name brand. They last forever. And I've got a medium-sized angled brush, and I'm just going to dip it in my linseed oil, get some of these colors going, and I'm going to put it on thick, and then we're going to kind of scrape it off with a palette knife. Let's start with, get that out of the way. Let's start with some thick blue. Well, you're not going to move, are you? Hang on. There we go, just for a minute. The turpentine, or mineral spirits, is also a blending medium with oil. It helps thin this out some, and I kind of want to get, get it thin at first and cover my, cover my canvas. Then I'll start thickening it up. We'll get these midnight blue hues going. And closer to fall, I'd like to do some real crusty pumpkins, show you how to do those with a palette knife too. Uh, I'm gonna be doing an invitation using some pumpkin paintings and you can use any of your paintings as thank you notes or gift cards. Paint it, take it to a UPS store, and they can print it on cardstock and put any kind of verbiage in the world that you want on it. And it's a custom card. Hey guys, y'all can do that and sell them. But it makes your painting not just be hanging on the wall. You can actually use them as thank you notes or baby invitations or anything you want. You only paint so much and hang them on the wall. Here we go, I like that little flat head. Now I'm gonna start with the palette knife in a little bit. I kinda wanna just place my paint first. Now I'll lose my sketch of my bird, but that's okay. You can redraw it with your paintbrush. This might appeal to some younger viewers because we're gonna get contemporary with this background. And that is the new thing, large and crazy on your canvases. This is about as big as I have time for. Okay, now, let me get this palette knife and start icing on some of this. And this is something else you can do is put your finger up close to the edge of your palette knife and that gives it a little more control. It's not quite so loose when you have your finger way back. Let's put it up a little closer. There we go. It's expensive when you use oil paint. So show off and show that you've, you know, gotten a lot of this stuff on here. And it will make the painting look richer and a little more valuable, actually. There's that white. I'm gonna slam some more on here. Okay, there is zinc. Where is, I keep losing it. Where is my, let me just try this here. There's some, let's try this. There it is, I see it. Here's some more. This is zinc, white. It's a little bit more transparent than titanium. That's all right. I don't mind if it globs. Y'all think I'm crazy, but on a contemporary like this, a little globbage, it's kind of cool. A little blue down here. Now, A little more black. Not a whole lot, because I don't want to take away from my bird. I'll bring some black up here. This is actually a 16 by 20. 
but a crow would be really good to do on an 11 by 14 and just sit him on an easel around the house for Halloween. Okay, here's my yellow okra. I'm going to add a little white, I mean white, red, and a little bit of, um, let's see, brown. Get, him, get it real earthy looking. Get one that opens. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm just going to kind of palette knife this whole thing on. Here's my okra. I want it on the edges. This gives you some of your fall colors in here. Just kind of blend it in. And if you see a little bit of the canvas, that's okay. You don't have to cover it all. Let's get over here and I'm going to go a little richer. A little bit of a darker yellow tone or brown tone. These are so much fun. If you really start using a palette knife in your paintings, you'll get hooked. It's a lot of fun. People love them too. I'm going to add some bright yellow to tone that down just a little bit. Mix it with my white. See how fun? Kind of like kindergarten. Some red. I do want a real bold, rich jab of red in this. Make it look a little bit haunting. Like maybe he just killed something and there's what's left over. Now, blue and black. I will start redirecting it some here in a minute with my paintbrush. Turning your palette knife back and forth from one direction to the other also helps make it interesting and it pushes that paint kind of over where it needs to be. I've actually seen in some art galleries some contemporary artists that will get gold leaf paint in a jar and pour it on top of the canvas just like this and just let it run. That's It's a pretty cool look. I really like it. I may do that here sometime. Just to rock your world. And when it dries, it's beautiful. And when you put it in a lit room, it just illuminates. There we go. See how fun. And it does look like a third grader did this, but I promise it'll get more sophisticated as we get closer. Now I've got my paintbrush and I'm just gonna kind of redirect some of this paint just a little bit. And I, then I'll start thickening it back up again. There we go. Just kind of blending some of that together. Get the edges done. Get some more black out. Now, I'm going to get in some more black right here. And just make sure that the bottom doesn't look too unfinished. So I'm getting my brush and just going kind of along the bottom here so that your eye isn't you know, messed up when you're looking at this. You can kind of see a finished product. Get along the bottom here. And that few edges. Oh, I wish I'd have brought some gold leaf. I will next time. Here we go. Now, just, I'm doing my edges. Just a little bit. I don't want to mess up my erratical areas. So let me get a little more blue. Okay. And I'm using this little skinny cheap palette knife. They kind of work great. And the metal ones are good too. They really are fabulous, but I don't clean mine like I should. So then I have all this residue on it. 
and it's not as smooth and easy. These plastic ones you can throw away and buy another one. There's some more. Here we go. Do some blue right up in here. Now, contemporary art looks really good large. But I just, you know, I didn't have the room in here this morning. But if you really want to get a gallery wrap, huge canvas, the contemporary looks fabulous on a large piece. Now, around the bird, I want to get some soft blue highlights so you can see his black body. Let's see if that's going to work. Yeah. Let me clean this off. Squeeze out some more hardcore white. And I'm gonna lighten it up around him. So when we start actually doing the bird, you can see him better. There we go. Mark my words. I'm doing this in August, but by September, October-ish, you'll start seeing those black creatures all around. Here we go, some radical, radical. There we go, oh, I'm starting to like it. And remember, you've got to loosen up when you paint. You just have to loosen up and you have to remember it is just paint. Or if you're too stiff, it's just going to stifle you. And just have fun with it. I may be having too much fun. Black right up through here. I don't want to use all my black because we got to do our crow. And don't blend too much. I think I may have blended a little much there. You don't want to blend too much because you want to see your separated colors. That's what's going to make this so cool. Get some more blue. Put it here around his wing. Now I'm just kind of adding some interest, doing this palette knife here and there, cleaning off the edge of it. There we go. It looks kind of like New York City downtown. There we go. Oil paint will just move forever. It just moves around. Acrylic on the other hand, which I love acrylic paint, but it will stop and dry and fight with you. Now I'm going to do the little stand that he's going to be actually standing on. Let me move this. Yeah, acrylic paint can be kind of hateful. And if you're chicken to try oil, you're missing out. It's a lot of fun. Now I'm going to get my paintbrush again and just fill in some of these areas that the palette knife ain't gonna reach. Around his legs. And I'm doing it rough so it looks like it maybe has been palleted on here. I actually like seeing some of this canvas holes on here. It gives it kind of a rough feel. So I'm gonna leave some of them. Isn't that neat looking? Y'all might not think so. 
I just hate doing happy little trees all the time, you know? Okay. Get some more blue. Wow. Scrape that across through there. Wow. Give it some motion, maybe. There we go. Now, I do like my pop of red. I need to finish using up the rest of that red. Yeah, make it real. That could be anything from a sunset to a dead animal right here under this. All right. Now that's kind of the gist of the background. I think that looks pretty cool. If I had some gold, I would slam that gold on there. I think that would look so cool. As a matter of fact, I may do that when I take it out. It's just pour gold leaf all over it. I'm gonna start the crow now. You're gonna to have to be more specific and you're gonna to have to get a more specific paintbrush. So let me dig around here and find one. Here's a pretty good one. This one's got a little bit of a, let me squirt some more black out. It's got a little bit of a, an edge to it so I can get some detail on him. And you're gonna be redrawing your crow because you lost him when you're doing your background. And that happens a lot of times. Even if you spray it, you're gonna paint over a lot of your subject matter. So you need to learn to paint it with your brush. Eh, might use this one instead. Now you'll think I'm sick. I put it in my mouth, sharpen it. All right, here we go. Let me see if I can get this right. So I see his beak, so I think I can get him. There we go. It's got kind of a flat head separates him from the robins. Get him drawn with this paintbrush. And my art reference I'm looking at is teensy weensy. I'm gonna enlarge that just a hair. There we go. And what makes this guy so creepy are his eyes. I want him really to, this black needs to be really bold around all this color background. There's his wing, there's his chest. Hey, this is a good time in the fall. Go out and take some pictures of some crows and some fall animals and uh, paint them. Get them developed and paint them. My sister who lives in Kingsport is also an artist and she does plain air painting. And what that is, it's a French terminology for standing around in a yard with an easel or standing around out in a field somewhere with an easel and uh, it just wears me out. I, I, I've done it and it's fun. I've, took my, I've taken my art class before and we've done it. But uh, she's real good at standing there and capturing all of the colors. And um, I prefer a, an air conditioned art studio with a cushy seat, but she really does a good job. And these plein air artists, my hat's off to you, especially in this heat. All right, now I'm gonna get into the blue because it's in his wing big time. And I may have to squirt some more out. Sometimes I get stuck when I'm doing a painting just on using the same brush. If it works for me, I'll just keep using it the whole time. There we go. Can't see that blue, I'm gonna have to add some white to it. There we go.
There we go. I'll mix that blue in. Move him over. There we go. And you want your strokes to demonstrate some feathers on him. So some quick, with oil too, guys, one thing you want to remember is you can blend it away. Don't be such a blender. You have to stroke it on and let it go. Don't go back to it. Don't blend it away. Some more blue just to get some highlights on him. And crows usually aren't real pristine. They usually have some frayed feathers here and there, and that's what we want. We want him to look kind of like he's in a tissy. There we go. Get rid of some of these canvas holes and thicken this black up right down here. Which black is this? I just love it. This is Grombacher and it's lamp black. Some blacks you will find have too much gray in them or blue. Lamp black is dark. That's what we want for him. And I may have to go in and tweak the background just a little bit. Let's do a few little frays here and there. There we go. Oh, black is shiny, pretty. Goes with any decor. As crazy as it sounds, people are painting rooms black now and using maybe a semi or a high gloss on them. And they look pretty cool. And a lot of people for kids rooms will actually paint one black wall with chalkboard paint. And it gives kids a place to, um, to draw and paint, so forth. And they sell chalkboard paint anywhere. There we go, getting his feathers. Kind of want one up and frayed out a little bit right up here. I don't want him to look curly and cute. He's a crow. Okay. He's got some dark stuff going on there. I'm going to add some more blue. There we go. Even though you see blue in the crow, everybody knows he's black. Oil paint also adds a, a little sophistication to any painting. If you can't do oil, or it's not your preference, do it in acrylic and then get you an oil-based varnish and varnish over an acrylic painting. And it makes it look like an oil painting. Now I'm gonna make it kind of contemporary. So I'm gonna fray some of this out just a little bit. Maybe I did that too much. Get that off. Oopsie. There we go. There we go. I kind of want that to go back in the background if I can. Oil is forgiving. See, I kind of messed up right there, actually. I got that up too high. So I'm going to go back over my background, bring it back down, and it goes away. I was hoping it made him look too fat. So I'm going to take some of that away. Get my palette knife, scrape it up. There we go. There we go. Since it is contemporary, you can get away with a few more mistakes. And I'll come back to that in a second. I want to start working on his little beak here in a minute. Need a few more feathers. Right in this area. 
gotten a couple of different colors. I'm doing a little okra, just a tad, like it's reflecting off the light pole or something. A little down in here. I'll make one of them really long and off the page. This one's up. There we go. I want him to have an Edgar Allan Poe feel. There we go. Now his legs are very much this way. And he's on some kind of a stump. So I'm just going to get the top of that stump or maybe a light pole or something, but just getting the top of that so you can sort of see that he is on something. You don't really even see the crow's feet. I think I will do a couple, maybe one little claw here. There we go. Black, black. The only thing that really has color is that one wing, and I am going to bring it out again just a little more. Me and this white are fighting. Right here, there we go. Enlarge it on your phone and then just keep moving your screen around so you can see. Maybe a little fatter. Bring his chest down just a little more. He looks a little skinny. Fray, fray, fray. His head is square. Now I'm going to get a pointier brush and work out, start working on his beak. And it's me and you, White. We're going to fight some more. Here we go. <laughs> Squirt that out. It looks, it's not a yellow beak. It is kind of a gray silver beak. So I want to make sure it's, and it might just be because it's reflecting off of a light somewhere. But that's what this crow has. Now I'm trying to um, use turpentine and loosen up this thick white so I can get it to move around for me a little bit. There we go. And it crooks down like that. And it goes out to about right here. And then the scary part about this crow is his eye. And it's just kind of a white dot but I'm gonna make it have a little black area. Let me let that little dot dry a minute. Crick it down. Now, I'm gonna have to put a little paint under his beak so you see it. There we go. So I'm very carefully moving some paint around for background under his beak. This is why you always do your background first so when you do your detail, it's on top of it. You don't have to go back. I just missed that one area there. There we go. Make it look like it's part of the background. Maybe up here too, a little bit. I just don't want to miss that beak. It's pretty cool. There we go. Now we can see it because we've got the color around it. There we go. Now I'm going to get the black on the tip tip of this brush. We want to put your finger down and draw a line. Now if you've had too much coffee, that's not going to work. There we go. The bottom of his little beak is dark and the top is light. And it kind of 
goes, let me see, it kind of goes down a little bit right here. There's not that much detail to this bird, but this is important. It goes down. There we go. There's also a little hump thing on his beak right here. See, I'm getting the anatomy right. It's a hump thing. There we go. Right there. His head has a little highlight on it too. Right here. I'm going to add a little blue to it to tone it down. He's got kind of a little Frankenstein head. Now, I want to do a little teeny dot right here, like he's looking down, kind of. And maybe even do his, an eyebrow, kind of a, there we go. Now I kind of see why Bob Ross whispers a lot. You get involved in it and you just, your voice lowers. I don't know why. Here we go. I want him to look a little more frayed up here. Bring that wing up. I want to do a highlight on that wing. All right, here, so I'm gonna get my paintbrush and just sideways get some highlight on that wing. Okay, more black. It's not as easy as it might appear. It's just a little crow, but there we go. There we go, starting to get him. Okay, so getting close to finishing. Make that tail really thick right here. He's a daddy crow. There we go. Put some frayed feathers right down here. Add a little bit more to his post. See his claw right there. I'm gonna leave that Stray black line right there. I think it's pretty cool. Wanting to have a little mange to him. I think that's pretty good. All right. Now at the end, what you might want to do if you see some areas on your contemporary stuff that you want to work on, might want to add a little bit more to this pole here to show that he's sending on something else besides the one that's going this way. That's about it. Something else you could do to a painting like this is flick it. Just get your turpentine and get your paint and you could just flick it. And I, I could, I guess. I don't think it would mess it up. I'll show you. I hope I don't mess it up. Let's try it. See if we can't get a little flick or two on there. So you get your brush really wet with turpentine. Now y'all cross your fingers. And I'm just kind of getting several different colors on this brush, mostly turpentine. And you just flick it like that. And it gives it a few little stray dots that you're not really sure where they came from. As long as they don't run, you're good. Okay. Just like that. Just kind of flick it. And if you don't like some of them, you can always go back over them with your palette knife while it's wet like this. Look. Just get some of them and take them away. But a few flicks makes it pretty interesting, actually. It makes it look kind of, where'd those come from? You see a lot of that in some contemporary paintings are just flicks of something. Flick of gold would be pretty in one of these. There we go. Get rid of some of them. You don't want it to look like Hobby Lobby. There we go. All right, guys. It's an old black crow. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time on The Art Corner. Stay creative.